Ladies and gentlemen, if you're familiar with chess at all, then you are probably familiar with the name Stockfish. Stockfish is the strongest computer in our world of the 64 squares. It is constantly becoming the world champion, and its current version, which is 15, as of August 2022, is rated 3,700, which sounds like a rating that your five-year-old nephew tells your relatives that that's how strong they are at chess because it sounds so artificially made up and impossible. But in this video, I paired Stockfish 15 against Stockfish 8. Stockfish 8 was the version of Stockfish that played against Alpha Zero and has a rating of 3,370. I am going to show you four games that they played against each other. It is going to be absolutely fun. It's going to be uh, a blast. And then I'm going to give you the uh, Chess.com and Lee Chess game reviews of those games. So this is the first game that they played. Here they had one millisecond per move. Do you understand what that means? You understand that one millisecond? Like, human beings cannot react to a car stopping in front of them that fast. All right? So here we go. Stockfish 15 begins with E4. Uh, Stockfish 8 plays my, my, my favorite opening, and we have a Tartikauer. Now, remember, one millisecond, okay? We have, uh, we have Knight F6. Uh, sorry, Knight D2. Uh, played um, a couple moves ago, uh, and we get, we get to the Tartikauer. Now Knight F3. Now, again, if Stockfish 15 had a little bit more time to think, uh, it, would, it would probably play for the C3 setup. Uh, Bishop D6, Bishop D3, Castles, Queen C2. This is considered the main line. The thing about engines is that when they have less time to think, they don't know, they don't know openings. Like you, unless you program them with an opening book, which we didn't. So a lot of the time, they will not play something that's the main line theory and explore something else. So very early on, we get the bishops off the board. And the thing about the Tartikauer is that because black... Uh, damages their pawn structure early. Uh, as long as black does not get to generate a lot of play and a lot of activity on the open lines, black is worse in the endgame. You're worse in the endgame because you volunteered to have a worse queenside pawn structure. You have a three and I have a four. And the engine, if it's smart enough, will be able to capitalize on that. That's all it needs, even with one millisecond per move. All right, so we have bishop d6. And notice how the it, it, it gets the queens off. Is the closer we get into an endgame, the better it's going to be for the side that has the better pawn structure, right? So, bishop e3, all right, long castles. Now, here, a very nice uh, tactical defense. You can't go here because after I come back, uh, white is going to play the absolutely ridiculous move d5. And then if you take that as well, then I'm going to play bishop f4, discover check. I'm going to win this, and then I'm going to play c4 winning your knight, which obviously Stockfish 15 saw in point one milliseconds. That's terrifying, all right? It could see your future if you don't start getting better grades in school. B5 played by the other Stockfish, still sacrificing this pawn for knight d4, but you're going to get something back here because if black takes, uh, then rook d5. Now, the incredible thing here is to me that these engines are still in the balance. It's still only 0 0.4, 0 0.5 for white, which is like the standard evaluation of the opening anyway. Um... So c4 now, that sacrifices a pawn. That's literally just the sacrifice of a pawn. It's also the best move, which is unbelievable. And the entire idea here is that black is going to be unable to defend this pawn in the long run. So white, and that's why it gives it up. Like, for example, if a6, just king c2, king c3, king c4, that's literally the plan. So black sacrifices the pawn back. Ah, there's your 2 on 1. All right, there's the advantage now starting to pay off. So now we have the rook and bishop endgame. A couple of moves later, Stockfish 15 wins the pawn. It's a two-on-one on the queen side. This is still plenty losable for both colors and as a spectator, as a lower rated player. But you'll notice that the four on three on the other side of the board is not the same. Four minus three is one, but two minus one is also one. All right, and I'm not speaking in riddles. This is a problematic position for Stockfish 8 because slowly but surely, look what's happening. The blockade is getting into full effect over here. You're not letting these pawns through. This is the only thing preventing Stockfish 15 from having a completely winning position right now. And you'll notice, all right, it's beating up its, its, younger, its younger sibling over there, Rook D2. And it doesn't even look like any progress has been made, but it, trust me, it's been made. And there we go, rook b6. Oh, the dominance on the back rank, king d5. And Stockfish is looking to win this pawn. It's not even necessarily looking to trade on b5. All right? And you'll notice that, yeah, uh, Stockfish 8 starts getting desperate. The pawn has been won. Two on zero is just game over. And uh, we get to an end game where the pawns are going to make it through. Uh, white is completely paralyzed, and uh, the pawn does, in fact, ultimately make the difference. So the entire problem of the Tartikauer at engine level is that fact 
that you have a three on four and Stockfish 15, they, they, by the way, they play till checkmate. Engines usually play till mate. Stockfish 15 wins. Uh, with one millisecond to make every single, 0.1 millisecond, not one millisecond, but 0.1 milliseconds to play every move. In this game, this was the Lee Chess Senti Pawn report. So white played, okay, 23 average. Black had 36 average. Uh, obviously, we're, it's going to get better. Uh, and, and the game review uh, for was like this. So still 92 caps, basically, from the chess.com game review. Which is just ridiculous. I mean, 92, like, that's like the highest peak of some, you know, of, of some people's, uh, some people's averages, you know? Um, and that's, that's what these engines got, having less time to play a move than, like, people have to, again, a stopping car in front of them on the road. Uh, for the next two games, uh, I gave them five seconds per move. Now, these engines will play better moves than any human being, like, 99.99999% of the time. The only time these, with five seconds per move, that's what I'm trying to say. The only time they won't is in the opening. Because again, these engines don't know the consequences of moves in the first 10 moves like humans do, because we've studied them through trial and error. Oh, you drove off a cliff with no parachute. Huh, I wonder what the result of that is going to be, right? So these engines, they don't know. So sometimes they make mistakes. All right, E4. And we have a Rosalimo. A Rosalimo with G6, a main line. This is super interesting. Castles, Bishop G7 from Stockfish. And you'll notice that white never took on C6. So Stockfish 8 never took on C6. Now, the thing about the Rosalimo and its inherent imbalance is that black likes a kingside attack. Black likes a kingside attack even if this happens. And there are many positions where if white castles too quickly, black will play E5, Knight H6, F5, and just start like firing pawns down the side of the board. It's like a interesting version of the King's Indian defense where black does the very same thing. White oftentimes needs to play fast on the queen side. A3, B4, Bishop E3, taking control of the light squares, rotating out of here and fighting back with F4, right? So we have knight E7, Bishop C4, knight D5. So Stockfish 8 is kind of doing that. It's like, ah, look at me, I got the big bishop. H6, D6, King H7. These are all moves preparing F5, G5, and so on. And there it is. Now the eval is zero. When Stockfish 8 says it's zero, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. When Stockfish 15 says the evaluation is zero, you stop what you're doing and you go, oh, God, no, that's not good. Uh, engines are also very bad at evaluating attacks, and you cannot be bad at evaluating attacks against the god of chess engines. All right, H3, Queen F6, and now, according to Stockfish 15, Stockfish 8 makes an inaccuracy here and plays the move A3. I don't know how that move is really inaccurate. I mean, I get that you're trying to prepare B4. Apparently, just going B4 in some moments here is interesting. There's, like, lines you can sacrifice uh, uh, on the C file, but, okay, A3. Here's why it's inaccurate, because now you have F4, G5, right? But King H2, you cannot just go G4. That move looks good, but White's idea is to play Rook H1, okay? And then King G1, and suddenly white is attacking black. It's really funny. And that's actually what you're going to see uh, Stockfish 8 do right now. It plays Rook H1, A4, stopping what's going on over there. And it's going to play King G1 at some moment. That is why, for now, Stockfish 15 is just waiting for the counterattack to begin. It literally waits for the counterattack to begin. And then is like, oh, King G1, right? So your entire idea here was to prevent my attack because now you have the Rook and I got the King there. H5. Yeah, again, when stock, when you play a plan and the machine just plays into your plan, you know something's wrong. Now I just slide the king out of the H file. And I'm going to go G4 at some point. But these engines are so good at not rushing. A5, right? So my entire plan was G4, right? What? Now I'm striking in the middle. What is going on? How does this make any sense? Oh, it makes sense because B5! Because you surrendered control of the, A4, of the B5 square when you played A5. So now I'm going to bait you into taking so that after bishop d5, rook b, or bishop b5, rook b5, I take this. And just the threat of the attack made you do some stupid stuff with your pieces. And I'm going to roll you on the other sides of the board. All right, d6. The engines are the masters of the feints. They feint the jab, they come over the top, right? They feint the jab, they throw the left high kick, they become the welterweight champion of the world. Actually, Leon faked the cross, technically, but whatever, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, knight c8 back. Bishop takes b5, and the position for white begins falling apart. 
we might not even see the move g4. We might see the move g4. We might not see the move g4. It depends how white plays. King g6. The king's going up. It's not even going back. Who is Stockfish afraid of? Itself? Seven versions uh, younger? Yeah, good luck. D7. All right, the pawn is now lost. Now black is uh, back to being materially equal. And yet yeah, now, 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 there it is. The second that the king steps back in front of the rook, like it's like tying your shoes together, here comes g4. I mean, it, the Stockfish does not, it doesn't care that there's a check. Like, why would it care if there's a check? I'm just going to block. Again, it knows when to trade the queens. The king is the most active piece now. It, it doesn't, it doesn't care. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not afraid of bringing the king out or making it more active or anything. It doesn't, it doesn't care. All right. It's going to keep playing aggressively and, and being awesome. So, knight e1 back, and uh, at some point, the king has to go back to g1, and Stockfish just keeps bringing pieces. Version 15 is just, look at this. And then at some point, it's like, all right, let's trade queens. I've had enough of the queens on the board. I've had enough. Your king can step out, knight e4. I'm going to win some more material. I'm going to rook d2, g3. Perfect, just perfect play. Every piece is being extracted for its maximum value, e4. And the point of e4 is that after f takes e4, I can take on c3 and come back. But let me go rook a2 instead. You can't even stop me from going here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. All I need is two pawns. It's kind of insane because it, it feels like white has lost a bunch of material. And yet there's no way to prevent bishop c3 and rook e1. And white does escape ultimately, but at the cost of losing everything. All right. Uh, and uh, well, stockfish 15 gets the pawn, stops the other pawn, and that's it. It's just going to promote, and it's going to checkmate. Like I said, these engines like to play till mate. It makes another queen, cuts the king off, and uh, a perfect geometric checkmate with queen and bishop. And that is how Stockfish 15 defeated Stockfish 8 with five seconds to make every single move. It played a Russell Limo, and the second that it was able to generate play with h6, d6, king h7, f5, that is a very interesting, interesting attacking scheme to play g6, h6, Put the king and bishop like this. You should use this in your own games. I'm telling you. Like, there is actually stuff to learn here. You might watch this like, this is like, you know, two whales at a, in, in, in some, you know, you go on like a little boat out into the, in the ocean or wherever the whales live and you just want, not SeaWorld. Now I'm, the, now I'm not talking about, don't sue me SeaWorld. But not in captivity. You know, you go out in the wild, you see those beautiful whales. This is what, this is what I'm talking about. All right. Like, this is like, this is, it's not just that. You can actually learn how to play from these engines. It's fascinating stuff. Now, another game that I have for you is when Stockfish 15 plays white and they each get five seconds per move. Um, oh, I have to show you the evaluation of this position, uh, rather, the review. Yeah. So, after this game, uh, th uh, th this was so Stockfish with white had an 18 average semi pawn loss with only four inaccuracies. Yeah. Stockfish 15 played a perfect game, <laughs> it just played every perfect move. It had an 8 centipon loss. You should report it for cheating. Uh, and the, uh, the chess.com review was also kind of disgusting. It was just a 98. Zeros all across the board down there. No inaccuracies, no mistakes, no blunders. With 5 seconds to make every single move. It's just absolutely incredible. Uh, the third game that I have for you. All right, like I said, Stockfish 15 was white in this game. Uh, so the, the thing about this game that makes it extremely impressive is that uh, Stockfish 8 plays an opening... Uh, which is supposed to just be equal, right? It's just an opening that, that top grandmasters used to make draws. Uh, here we go. It's a Berlin. And I would actually expect that Stockfish would uh, um, maybe play like D3. I keep saying Stockfish, but you, 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 know, you get it. It's the one that's the Terminator. But it, it plays into a Berlin. Now, it doesn't play the Berlin endgame. This is actually very interesting. It doesn't play the Berlin endgame. And that might be because, uh, I don't know, it's, I don't know, actually, I, I, I'm actually not sure. I guess it thinks that the Berlin Endgame is kind of a problem. So instead, it plays this rookie one variation, which GMs have been playing recently, but it's incredibly boring and symmetrical, d4. So here, normally, bishop f6 is played at the highest level, uh, and then black tries to trade a lot of material. The engine uh, here plays the second most popular move, which is knight e8, and the idea is to play like bishop f6, and white here plays d5. So d5 might look ridiculous, but it's actually a good move because you take space. If nothing else, in a position of total pawn symmetry, like you have here, you need some space. Here the computer likes to play bishop c5. Sorry, humans like to play bishop c5, threatening this pawn and queen f6. Uh, white oftentimes will return the rook back, and then black plays d6. Stockfish 8 plays knight f6 and then d6. And this is still okay, but it's extremely passive. And even though you can go knight d7 and bishop f6 and then put the knight on c5, 
it's extremely passive, right? And that is very dangerous against something like Stockfish 15, which immediately takes space on the opposite side of the board. And it plays A4 and A5. It just takes space. If nothing else, you take flank space and then you will figure it out, all right? Now we have knight to E4. You're like, you wanna trade bishops? Go and take my bishop, which hasn't moved. So now not only the Stockfish 15 wins space, it wins time. Right? That bishop on e7 moved multiple times and was traded for something that hasn't moved. The knight controls the queen squares, okay? And the other idea of combining these two moves, you, you wouldn't have thought this was coming. Here it comes, rook a3. The pawn has moved out of the way, and the rook is going to rotate over this way potentially, or it's going to go behind the pawns. It's got the threat of coming here and maybe playing f4, but b4 and c5, all you need is space. Da, 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 da. All you need is space. C5. So Stockfish 8 gets it into this endgame of knight versus bishop, but now here comes the rook. And everything in white's position is playing perfectly. Is white winning? No. Black is doing a good job defending. There's no checkmate threats yet. B4. And at some point, here it comes. C6. Look at this monster bishop. That bishop went out and came back and has such an important role in this game. That, do, you, do you realize that is why Stockfish 15 played a4, a5? Because not only are you taking space, the a6 pawn is going to be forever in the line of sight of the bishop on f1. It knew this was going to happen. I told you it can see the future. It can see what your love life holds. Stockfish 15, I mean, God forbid, Stockfish 20 is going to be able to see the past, the future, and like another dimension of chess and life. It knew this was going to happen. Now, black is still not completely lost. Not completely lost. There are still some chances. For instance, let's say you play one lazy move by white. Now all of your, eval now all of your advantage is basically gone because I'm going to take, maybe, and I'll try to sneak my pawn through. Bishop f1, rook a5, and that's it. That is the, the one major asset that you have here is the pawn. It is all about how you're going to save the pawn. Everything else does not matter. The pawn on a6 is going to decide this game. Black can create some counterplay. The queen on a1 is extremely powerful, but king h2. Sacrificing the bishop completely because a7 wins the game because there is check and promotion. So king h2, knight e5, kicks the knight out again, and now a7. Very nice move here. Uh, it, this got a brilliant move, apparently. I don't really understand why. Uh, but uh, yeah, the entire idea here is that you would play bishop b5. Uh, then you would play in this position the only winning move, which is not bishop c6. Because then b2, and if you make a queen, black also makes a queen. But the only winning move in this position for white after b3, because you don't want to take, is queen e7. And the idea of queen e7 after bishop to b5 is that after queen a7, you have check here, check. g6, and you win the knight. Now, why is that only possible after b3? Like, let's say, like, bishop b5, and, I don't know, black played something else. Well, then bishop c6 would win the game. So you have to go here and promote, and then that would be the situation that we find ourselves in. And white uses that pawn, ends up getting a completely winning endgame, finally breaks through. And here, uh, Stockfish 15 does something absolutely disgusting. It doesn't just go here. Of course this is winning. Of course, it has a bishop versus pawns. Stockfish 15 walks its king to the other side of the board. Stops the, doesn't worry about all that, doesn't care, walks the king and kicks out the defense from the knight. Bro, that is so savage and unnecessary. And then it, win, it makes a full queen. These computers, the way they play, the brutalization of the way they play is hilarious. Now it wins everything. And uh, like I said, it doesn't sack the queen for the knight, like nothing. It just takes everything, never sacrifices, wins the knight, and then even makes a second queen. Dude, it doesn't need a second queen. I almost thought it was going to mate with a third queen. But the meta is to make a second queen. That is the fastest way to win, and win it does. It won this symmetrical position so fast and so impressively, I was shocked that black is rated 3370. I can finally laugh at an engine, right? I normally laugh at an engine because I don't understand what it's talking about. I am intimidated by intelligence, right? That is why we laugh at engines, because we're just like, ah, shut up. Well, I'm never... But it's just fascinating. I mean, it's just Stockfish picking up its, like, younger sibling and just punching it for its lunch money. It's, it's just unbelievable. Now, the next game took a long time because they got 20 seconds to make a move here. Uh, that's better than the top 20 GMs all combined into, you know, one entity. The mistake uh, that's... Oh, oh, wait. Apologies. I have to share with you the uh, evaluation of the last game. This was the evaluation of the last game. 
Only 96.7 for uh, Stockfish 15. Uh, and uh, yeah, this one was even more disgusting. Uh, it was once again a perfect game. Shocker. Uh, this time only three inaccuracies by Black. Still not good enough. 19 centipon loss, better than any Grandmaster on Earth. Doesn't matter. Not good enough. Stop playing the literal, uh, the Jinzo out here of, uh, of computer chess. Fourth and final game. Now, I, I, if you guys like this content, if you made it 20 minutes into this video, let me know. I, I, I will pair Stockfish 15 against Stockfish 15. I'll do it. Don't, don't tell me I won't do it, all right? Um, Stockfish 15 begins with E4. Stockfish 8 plays the French. Now, Alpha Zero refuted the French. It basically said the French is garbage, unless you're humans, and humans are garbage. So we have a classical. This is the best way to play against the French. Uh, it is the only way to get an advantage because Black's options are to suffer under a lack of space uh, or uh, play the win hour, which I think is just completely refuted at engine level. Like, I've never seen engines play this against each other. Um, so we have knight f6, we have a main line, and then here black can play a6, bishop e7, and so on, but queen b6 is the most forcing move, as it hits this and this. Now, white can defend this in tactical ways like a3. If queen b2, the queen is just trapped. Trust me, stockfish 8 would not have fallen for that, but instead of that, white plays the most direct approach. And after queen a5 check this, there's pawn takes d4, and this move b4. Now you'll notice my low depth engine thinks black is better. Like my eval bar, okay, now, now it's saying, the most common move in this position is to sack the knight and then go here, okay? And then trade like this, knight d2, and black gets three pawns for white's piece, but this is just not gonna work. Like the white engine here is just gonna win. You give it a piece, it's not the same thing as being up a piece for three pawns in human terms. So rather than getting involved in that, Stockfish 8 is like, I'm not gonna sack a piece. We can trade, we can have equal material, I'll figure this out. I'll be a little bit passive, I'm gonna develop, bishop b7, break here with the move f6. It's gonna be great, all right? Let's do it. Okay, Stockfish is like, okay, oh, Stockfish 15 is like, all right, castle, rook c1. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, okay, yeah, you're gonna play g6, stop my attack. All right, h4. h4. So, first things first, you can't take this, of course, uh, because queen h5 is a fork. So, that doesn't work. Uh, I'm still gonna go queen h5. So you'll notice that my web-based stockfish thinks that the position here is just equal. It actually thinks that, like, this is nothing, it's nothing scary. In fact, it takes the pawn now. Stockfish 15's like, all right, rook f3. I'm gonna go rook h3, let's go. Oh, you pushing pawns where you're being attacked. Doesn't Gotham say not to do that in his videos? I don't know why Stockfish 15 watches my content. Probably to laugh at me. And queen h3, a5, no fear in the world here by Stockfish 8. It's like, yeah, I'm going to create counterplay on that side of the board. Stockfish 15 is like, nope. Now you can't move your queen side. My knight on a4 is going to paralyze the queen side. Knight c5, okay. Knight b6, what? Oh, if queen b6, of course you lose this bishop. You lose this bishop, you lose the game. Dark squares are too weak. So we have knight b6, knight d3. This knight is maybe going to take this rook. All right, so the rook moves. But now black really just is running out of moves. Rook f1. Now you would think here that white should play g4, of course, right? This seems like the more natural move. No, f5. As brutal as possible. What? I don't understand. What is the idea? You can't get through now. There's nothing. Rook. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's not good. That is really bad. When, when Stockfish 15 sacrifices a rook, you, you, you just, you, you know you're lost. Like when your friend, you know, Jeffrey sacrifices a rook against you at your corporate office game, you're like, oh, this idiot lost a rook. But when Stockfish 15 sacrifices like a rook, you're like, oh my God, you know, oh, I'm sacrificing a rook for, for content. No, nobody's sacrificing this rook for content. The game's over. Now, of course, if G takes F5, how does the game end? Check. The king goes to like somewhere. You, you really shouldn't go here because you're going to walk directly into this. Uh, so yeah, King G8, just rook G3, as well as E6 with mate. So, Stockfish uh, 8 tries to, you know, h4. Yeah, no, please take my rook. Please, you can pin me. That doesn't matter. I'm going to take the bishop. I'm going to take the bishop. Now you take my rook? Check here. I'm going to threaten, you know, to take your... All right, f4. I'm just going to take that too. Rook b6. Oh, you're so clever. Except I can take your rook, but even... Oh, this is even more nasty. I don't even have to take your rook. I can disconnect your rook. And then you can sacrifice and go here. That's great. Yeah, now let's play a winning rook endgame. <laughs> and okay, Stockfish 15 here really shows some disgusting manners. 
What Stockfish 15 does in this game is, again, what looks like what you do against your friend. Stockfish 15 doesn't push those pawns and, like, sacrifice... Look at this. It's going to make three queens. It, it actually made three queens. It made three queens, guys. I mean, are, we, are you kidding me? It made three queens for no reason! <laughs> oh, it's unbelievable. Ah, uh, yeah, as we would expect, uh, Stockfish 15 won every game and it wasn't even close. And the review of this game was a seven centipon loss. It lost even less centipons in this game than in the last game. Of course, Black did its usual thing with the several inaccuracies. And yeah, the Chess.com game review here was a 98 with three brilliant moves. Yeah, not so bad. Apparently, White made an inaccuracy. Apparently, the game review gave it an... Of course, it's nonsense because the game review is not as powerful as Stockfish 15, obviously, like on the developer side. Um, but yeah, Stockfish 15 obviously completely obliterated Stockfish 8. It did it in a variety of different ways. Uh, massive kingside attacks, uh, just demolishing it positionally like against the French defense, winning a totally symmetrical position, for example. Endgame grinds, the one slight difference in an opening that changes the opening from white to black side, it took advantage of in the first game. And even with one millisecond to move, it was just unbelievable. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. I will continue to make some videos like this one. I have some other uh, uh, content ideas that I want to throw Stockfish in the mix and including trying to make Stockfish 15 play Stockfish 15. I'll see you in the next video. Get out of here.